Hi, it's Roger here with the four steps to start any business and they're actually the opposite of what most people think, which is why most businesses fail and the ones that do succeed, the people who start them, can start multiple businesses. Uh, and I'm actually here at the Jefferson Memorial in Washington right now because I want to use the founding fathers as an example. They didn't start a business, they start an entire country, but they use the same four principles. And so just as we kind of go up here, let me um, say, first of all, this whole video series is actually even happening because of you. Like uh, I kind of set a whole series of videos in place for my book launch, then ask you, hey, do you think I should continue with this? And the number of comments that I got on the YouTube channel was just awesome. Thank you so much for commenting if you did. Uh, and as a result of that, it's like, right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna be uh, giving more and more tips on how to run a business in the most effective way. And what I'm gonna do to start with uh, is I'm gonna ask you to put your genius, who you are, what your genius is, uh, or your Wealth Dynamics profile is uh, in the YouTube comments. Because if you do that, then we're gonna be able to get people connecting with each other. Because what you're gonna find, just like the founding fathers, is you cannot do this on your own. And what's important about this is if you know what you are and you're saying, hey, here's the country I'm in, uh, here's the, uh, maybe a bit about yourself if you wanna say that, or just go straight into, here's my genius, Dynamo Genius, Steel Genius, uh, here's my profile, you know, Wealth Dynamics profile, like Star or Dealmaker, whatever that is, post that in the comments, and then as a result of that, I can see who you are. Um, I can make sure that I start tailoring these videos to whoever is the predominant genius. Uh, and if you're new to all of this and you're going, what's my genius? Go to mygeniustest.com and just go ahead and take the test, it's free. But it allows you to kind of like start to see, hey, look, I've got certain strengths and talents, which by the way, you need. Because as I go through the four steps, you're gonna see that these four steps require you to know, first of all, what industry should you even be in? You know, the industry you should be in should be a mix of three things. Something which, number one, allows you to actually follow your talents, which is your genius. Number two, something you're passionate about, which you love to do. And number three, something which brings you purpose, which is meaningful. If you say, yep, that's the industry I've figured out for myself, great. If you don't know those things yet, well, we can help on different videos on that and on our Genius U platform. But the most important thing is you're starting by saying, right, here's the surface in which I'm gonna carve my niche. Then you don't start by just saying, right, I'm gonna go out and create my own product and hope that people buy it. You start with the first of these four steps. Step number one is there's already leaders in your market. So step number one is actually connect with the leaders, know who they are, and then step number two is after you go study them and know who they are, be their customer, which means you're actually in commerce and trade with them now as a customer. And that way you actually learn what it is that actually made them so successful because all their customers are going through that experience as well. That then leads to the third step, which is to be their partner, because guaranteed every single successful business in the world, uh, which is a leader in its field, is not just making themselves wealthy by giving value, they're connecting to many, many other people who also are doing the same. And then after you learn how to be their partner, step number four is you carve your own niche because niches aren't something that you create out of thin air. They're not something that you find and then try and occupy because if it's there, someone's already in it. It's something you're carving off a surface. Just like in here where you can see, this is a pretty amazing spot here. This is actually um, a memorial which is modeled after the Pantheon in Rome, which was one of Jefferson's most favorite buildings. This is Thomas Jefferson who actually drafted the first Declaration of Independence, the one that we have today. He drafted it, then uh, two others, uh, John Adams and Benjamin Franklin helped to kind of fine tune it. And then it got uh, ratified and accepted into the first Congress, which was here in America in 1776. That was like Declaration of Independence. And what I want to share with you is that it sounds like this awesome story where a group of people came together and just created this country, but actually they followed the same four steps. Step number one is to know your competitors or the leaders already who know how to do this. So even though they were uh, against England, fighting England at the beginning of the War of Independence, they actually really studied, the founding fathers really studied, well, what made England successful? You know, what made France successful? What made Spain successful? And they found it comes down to two things, just in business, it's the words and it's the numbers. The words were already enshrined in England in a Bill of Rights, and at the same time, have a look at this. This is the Declaration of Independence actually carved uh, right into the wall here. And it says in there, as you see at the top, or maybe you can't, but it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, 
Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, where did those words come from? It was actually John Locke, who was uh, a friend of Isaac Newton, 100 years earlier in uh, the Age of Enlightenment in England, that actually wrote, first of all, about the rights of man in his natural philosophy, something that uh, George Mason studied. George Mason was uh, Washington's mentor. And George Mason actually was the first to actually create a declaration, which he did in 1776 for Virginia. And that declaration, which became law uh, on the weekend before uh, July the 4th, um, at that point, when, um, when George Mason put it together, he saw that John Locke was talking about three rights of man, which was life, liberty, and property. He goes, no, I'm going to add happiness to that, which he did. Uh, and then Thomas Jefferson got together and like, said, I'm going to write something real quick for the Declaration. So he used those same words and he took out uh, the property, thought that's not as appropriate, and left in the happiness. And that's how we got these words in the Declaration. Learning from the best who are out there, seeing what it is they do, and then what it is you need to alter or see differently, You've now got context, which allows you to create the content. So here's Jefferson right now, as you can see, huge statue of Thomas Jefferson in here. This place is amazing. So now that you actually know more about your, uh, um, uh, about your leaders in your industry, how do you become your customers? What do you do? Well, it's really interesting because in the case of the Founding Fathers, another one of the Founding Fathers, his name is Alexander Hamilton. If you want to know kind of like what does Alexander Hamilton look like, he is a distant relative of mine. He is on the $10 note here. As you can see, it says Hamilton down the bottom. Uh, and uh, he was the numbers guy. And what he did was he studied Isaac Newton. A lot of people don't know, Isaac Newton wasn't just a scientist. He was the first uh, master of the mint uh, during this age of enlightenment to create like the entire monetary system that was used and to put in place the national debt through the Bank of England, which allowed England to be in debt to other countries. It's actually how England ended up being so powerful against France and defeating France was actually the fact that it could go borrow and then people go, oh, we'd much rather uh, England survive so that they can pay us back. And that's why Alexander Hamilton became the first uh, um, secretary of the US Treasury. He set up the US Treasury. He set up um, the Bank of New York. Uh, and he also set up the, uh, the US Mint. So he kind of like was there printing the money and making sure that America was in debt to all these countries, like to Spain, uh, to Netherlands, uh, which at that point was Dutch Republic. That's actually how the Americans ended up winning against the British, by having the support of these European partners who were coming on board and seeing them, first of all, as a customer, where they were saying, hey, we, you know, America is our customer. They, they owe us all this money. We better make sure that they survive. So that's how they learned everything about them. And then that then led to the third step, which is now be their partner. So you might think that during the American War of Independence, everyone was just focused at America. But no, they went out, they went overseas. So for example, in the Founding Fathers, Benjamin Franklin became the ambassador for France, went out to France, and it was why the actual end of the war, which happened not in America, it actually happened in France, became known as the Treaty of Paris. Uh, John Adams, after helping with the Declaration of Independence, he went off to the Dutch Republic. And it was as a result of that, that America became recognized in The Hague as a country. So sitting behind your desk, being in your office may not be the best place to be kind of starting your business. But you go out, find who the leaders are, become their customers, find out how they're partnering with others. That's exactly what they did. And it was as a result of that, that we ended up with America becoming uh, the country that it is today. Now, after that happened, was that the end of it? No, they became partners also with England itself. The moment the war was over, which was like seven years after this declaration was written, the moment it was over, then at that point, John Adams moved from the Dutch Republic to England, became the ambassador in England. And a year later, Thomas Jefferson here traveled to England to, to kind of like study the Magna Carta. I talk about the Magna Carta in another video, and I talk about George Washington in another video, so you can go have a look at that. Um, I also talk about what it is to etch uh, into stone, uh, which is in my last video about creating a journal, about creating a niche for yourself. So here's a story where you've got the Founding Fathers basically winning the War of Independence, not even in America. Of course, they're fighting here, but they're actually creating those partnerships, which make all that difference. And so they're in context. It's like, it's like this solid wall here. You, if you're going to create a niche that you're going to carve something into, start by making sure that you've actually got something solid that you can, you're not just doing it into thin air. And that's really the whole message here. Create the context before the content, do it with the leaders in the industry, 
uh, and then you can carve your own niche. Now, like I said, this entire um, monument, this memorial, was designed around the Pantheon. Have a look here up at the uh, domed ceiling here. The Pantheon was actually designed as a model of the universe. So this was a model of the universe. And if you're actually going to create a niche, it's like creating a dent. The word identity has the word dent in it. And the identity of your business, the identity of what makes you stand out, comes down to actually starting with something solid and then carving into it. So what's your dent in the universe going to be? What is it that's going to really allow you to shine by creating your own pantheon, by being like one of other greats that have already created it before you? Model off them, become their customer, after become the customer, become the partner, and then it'll be very clear to you how to carve your own niche, either working with them or alongside them. Whichever way works best is going to be really clear once you're in there and you're part of the fabric of the market and the industry that you love most. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. We'll get into more in the coming videos. Uh, make sure you make your post your note in terms of what is your genius or your profile level, and you're going to find straight away that you can start creating your own founding team and to work alongside others as well. Okay, have a great week. We'll catch up with you again later. Bye-bye.